My precious family, may our hearts be softened. May our ears be opened to true discernment and our hearts be open to wisdom. Amen. Blessed Mother is giving us messages every day now to prepare us for our mission for the Lord. I will not always post those messages because some of them will be personal, but even then I will share as much as seems appropriate for both of us. Please forgive me if I repeat myself. There have been so many messages in the past few days that I'm struggling to get caught up, and I may overlap some of the things the Lord or His Mother has given me. When I came into the rosary and began praying, immediately I saw Our Lady, and I said to her, Most beautiful lady, thank you. Thank you for coming to us. What can I do for you? She answered me, Faithfulness is always the greatest gift you could give your God. I want all of those who love my son to understand that I love him too, so much so that I was willing to see him tortured in order that they could be with us in heaven. They do not understand, Claire. They think I want all the glory for myself, and nothing could be further from the truth. I adore him and want nothing more than to see him glorified and happy. This happiness consists in souls finding him and being saved. He longs for this with all his heart. That is why you have been called upon. This movement will never end. I will always be our Mother of Mercy, and all will come to understand that I take nothing away from my Son. Rather, I give him souls dedicated and bringing forth reconciliation to bring him more joy. And when she says, I give him souls, she means she works with the souls that are open to grace. Our Lady continued, You see, Satan does not want the body of Christ on earth to avail themselves of my intercession, nor of the intercession of the great cloud. He has suppressed the understanding because these are powerful intercessors. Nonetheless, these chosen souls in heaven do not relent. They continue to pray. Does Satan really think he can dilute or misrepresent my role in the church? The answer is yes. He's been doing this for hundreds of years. And now it is time to stop these lies and bring all men into the kingdom reality that we are all alive and connected through the Holy Spirit of God. Once this is grasped, the lies will be broken and all my children shall recognize me as their intimate friend and mother. I long to impart so many graces, but people do not want them for lack of understanding. The greatest of these gifts is the understanding of humility and the extremely important role it plays in their walk. And this, too, is one reason Satan hates me. I guide them away from pride, recognition, taking the credit, accomplishment, and so on. If Satan can inspire a good man with pride, he can negate that man's spiritual gifts and even be the cause for so many others to fall. Boy, isn't that true. This pride is rampant in the church, but it is little understood the depth of impact it has on their walk. The enemy is clever, and if he can infect others with the same heart attitude and give it good PR, they will follow that example. You see, they do not understand the tremendous help the saints and angels can help them with. They see themselves as totally separated from heaven's influence, and yet they go to the tombs of the great men of God expecting their assistance, praying there. It makes no sense. But this separation has been touted for so long, it has become a rule that the two can never be one until they die. Oh, my children, if only you knew all the riches of glory of those gone before you and how that would illuminate your path. If they could only see what is available to them, they would grow by leaps and bounds. 
Boy, that's true. I spent seven years as an evangelical and didn't get anywhere. She continued, Your part is to instruct and encourage them that I am not some kind of idol, but the mother of their Savior, and as such, I too have a role in heaven and helping you to reach heaven. You see, in heaven you will have many faculties you do not have here, and you will know all that is necessary for you to know at all times. The intimate connection between you and Holy Spirit will have no more limitations. Oh, how wonderful it is when you truly understand this. Continue to ask people to find in the Bible where it is not permitted in heaven for you to pray for those on earth. Make a point about this and tell them, if Jesus had wanted you to think that, he would have told you outrightly in the scriptures that no one can pray from heaven. But rather than this, he demonstrated how you can converse with those in heaven at the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, my dear children, do not be deceived and separated from those in heaven. You are one body of Christ with one head, Jesus Christ. Never forget that you are intimately connected with those in heaven. And they have been sanctified now, and they care about you and will pray for you. They are alive, not dead. The ones that are dead are the ones that will be called into the judgment. But these are the ones that are in heaven, just like Moses and Elijah, and they are permitted to interact with you, even as I am permitted. I bless you now and pray for the sweet presence of my Son to cover you and lead and guide you. Amen.